Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay. All right, all right, I guess about just let everybody know. Welcome to Bar Talk with Jay. Welcome. And what I did, I want to say brought to you by what? Nope. Yep. Ain't going to start that R&B thing no more. Disposal services. That's right. We got something brand new for you. We changed the name because we changed our whole looks, our image, and what we're trying to do for you. So come on and try us out. Go to my website. You'll probably still see RB just for a second and a half. We're getting the logos and everything together, but you're going to see a brand new product out there on the streets. Okay. So again, any of y'all looking for a driving job, please go ahead and give me a holler. I'm talking about the experience one. Don't be, don't, don't be coming to me and yeah, no experience at all. Don't be smiling when you're trying to do all that. But we're trying to do big things for you, and that does not take away from the man sitting next to me in the building. Crabmatic, how you doing, big baby? Man, I'm doing uh, swell, as they say. <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> swell. Yeah. Swell. 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 That's swollen. Swell. That's swollen. I like that, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a great, that's a great I'm analogy right full there. Full of love. I'm swell and swollen. swollen. Full of love, man. Full of love, full of passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, just going hard in life right now, man. Life is good, man. Oh, you know what, Jay? I just wanted to say, man, I'm What's real that? proud of you, bruh. Um, you folks obviously don't know the story, but uh, Jay made a transition from corporate America uh, some time ago, uh, not too long ago, and uh, took venture in a, uh, a company that he was already familiar with in his profession, and um, which is, uh, we, we call it garbage collection, yes. trash collection, yes. and um, disposal services. And let me tell you, uh, he has jumped on this business, he has been laser focused, he has kept uh, this sh- quote unquote sinking ship from sinking and he has now turned it into a positive. They have now uh, sold the company and starting a brand new company and uh, obviously he's working uh, with the folks who bought it. Uh, it could be nothing but uh, just kudos for man for you for going so hard in life. You've been a great example of uh, what one can do when they really set their mind to it. And so I just want to well, applaud man. you, Jay, for well, your for your you, works bro. and your efforts, man. You make me feel all warm and mushy. <laughs> I appreciate it's been a transition, man. man. It has. I promise yeah. you, it's been a lot of work, and it's one that I would not look at and say nothing more but exposure. Yeah, it's like the words you get. I, I, I had to be woken up to seeing something different. Um, yes. It was always something different there. I just had a light bulb go off. Yes. Where I worked for Corporate America and I did great things for them and they taught me so much. But when everybody want to talk that boss and everybody want to be that boss, I don't know if you really know what boss me. And I really like Ooh. to have that as a topic one day. Yeah. Because when you want to be that top guy, just understand it comes with a lot of responsibility. Comes with a lot. And everybody just want to look at the money. Yeah. And I like to say it's a lot of days that you ain't paid. Yeah. But if you ain't willing to put that work in, you probably will never see big pay. Yeah. So people chase top. money, but they don't chase dreams. Yeah. You got to understand, put a lot of work in because I seen something that nobody else seen. Yeah. In a company yeah. that I, I felt like I could add value to. And you got to have value in you before you can add value there to something go. else. There you go. So it's all about your substance. Folks, you are in the midst of Bar Talk with Jay. I'd like to welcome you all to the show. Uh, This is our opportunity to inspire folks through dialogue. And uh, we do a real good job of uh, just breaking subjects down and uh, really opening the doors of understanding. That's what this dialogue is really all about. It's about helping everyone, even us, sometimes here on the show, understand these these particular topics better. And uh, we'd like to think that it's a mirror image for you to look into and say, hey, would I do it that way? Would I do it this way? Uh, What decisions can you make about your life and your future as a result of hearing these conversations? That's really what it's about. And uh, uh, we always start the night, the night off with a prayer. And so let's go ahead and get the show started by uh, by uh, spending some time with the Lord. How about you, Jay? Man, I tell you, I, I need your help with this one. Um, I like to say this prayer. I'm going to dedicate it to my brother that passed, BB, down in Florida. You know, and again, to the help to recover from my other brother, Juman, that was down there to, to oversee him and made sure he was comfortable at his last time. Yeah. So again, for a lot of people that I didn't mention about my whole family, I got more family than y'all know about, so get over it. <laughs> the most important thing to me is, uh, at this time, I am just trying to make sure my family know that I love them, yeah. and my heart is out there for them, yeah. and anything that I can do, I'm definitely going to do. Yeah. So what prayer you can come up with is for them. Absolutely, absolutely. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence right now just uh, just thanking you for your graces and your mercies and uh, all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in this life. Uh, we come tonight specifically, Father, to uh, uh, to ask a prayer for uh, Bibi, and, uh, who, who's in Florida, G-Man, um, Jay's family member who recently passed. We know, Father, that he is with you. 
And uh, we ask that you would take good care of him and send him into a great eternal life. And uh, let him be healed and at peace and uh, all that comes with salvation tonight, Heavenly Father. We ask, Father, that you would watch over this family, that you would protect their hearts and minds from the emotions and from the dark thoughts that might come during these times. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would provide everything necessary for a fantastic life celebration. Uh, whether it be family traveling and coming in together, or whether it be money for the burial services, or whether it be uh, whatever it might be, we ask that you would be a provider and protector for this situation. And uh, and we just thank you, Father, that you are that you will find a way, Father, to express Jay and his family's love to that family. That there'll be a unified connection of love, Father, pouring into them just to uh, help support and love them and make sure that they know that they are loved. And so we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight and this show and what we're, got, what we're about to do in the spirit of your name. We pray this in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Man, like I said, you know, at, at this time, you, 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 you want to feel so, so many different ways, but I like to say I got to have a dynamic show because he was a dynamic person. I got to make sure I get my energy back up. Yeah. I like it's to know about time to, Yeah, it's not a time to be down. It's yeah. a time to be up. It's a time to be up. You know, yeah. and, and you want to know about him? Yeah. You've seen a little bit of him and me. Mm. He gave him mm. my mama. Mm. You know, so again, uh, great woman, did great things. So the only thing I can tell you is we got more things to do. Yeah. That's why we do this. Yeah, show. man. You know, uh, you know, after losing my father, man, this, this conversation is quite close to me. So, uh, you know. um, let's go ahead and dive in tonight. Uh, we got a great one lined up for you. Uh, t last week's topic, we talked about love or lust. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the difference? Oh man, that, that that's kind of jacked up after what I just said. All right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we we know a little bit about the difference. Damn, they're crapmatic. I like to say a lot of people don't always want to recognize it, but we know about that lust for eye. You know, everybody got it. And we can't just say the lust for eye is just all bad, but yeah, it is. Lust is bad. It is. No matter how you look at it. We try to, try to kind of sugarcoat it. We try to jazz it up. Yeah. Just leave it alone. It is what it is. That's yeah. why it's been written that it's one of the things that yeah. you probably need to stay away from because it leads to other things. Yeah, and describe lust for us in recap, now, lust, lust is like, again, now, when you look at that girl over there, that big old booty, I'm talking about big old booty. And you just look at her and you just want it because you just look at him, but you don't even know her. You don't know nothing about her. It's just the lust for a, a, a eye candy or a scene. Um, and again, when you get to know that person, all of a sudden it might be something totally different. You right. can get out of the lust and you might get into the person and then you find out it's a generally good person. But right. the lust is what brought you to even go over there to find out because you knew yeah. she was bad memory. Yeah. And, and, and it wasn't the intent of really getting it. It was just, I want her. Right. You know, and, and it's no more than to say what it is. It was probably sexual. See, we, it wasn't about getting over to be her best friend. It was about the you know. About the goodies. You, see, the goodies. See, see, you know, that's interesting because that means that uh I just want to try to break it down a little bit. That means oh, yeah. that when someone approaches me, right, or I approach someone, I'm going to be approaching them from one or two standpoints. Either from the lust standpoint. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to be approaching them from, I've seen past your physicalness now. Right. I'm interested in knowing who you are. Correct. And uh, I think at some point we have to determine who's coming at us. You know, who's, mm -hmm. you know who, who's coming at us. Or, you know, other people need to determine, how, hey, if I'm coming at you from a lustful spirit, you know, shine away. Right? Oh, Push right. me away. I, I'm, up, I'm up to no good. All I really want is, all I'm really looking at is the cookies and cream. Yeah, I'm looking at the physical package. The cookies <laughs> and cream. Yeah. Cookies I'm looking cream. at the physical package. That's exactly right. And so, um, yeah, it is a, a distinct difference between love and lust. Mm -hmm. Love is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And lust is physical. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you operate only out of the physical, you're probably going to wind up with very little at the, very, at the end. Right, because uh, we least, all know we like you know this. This is one of the things that me and my partners always say. I got to say it in a clean way. Mm -hmm. But you can take the finest woman mm -hmm. or the most handsome man in the world, mm -hmm. and somebody tired of messing with them. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Oh, I know. That. So the lust will fade. What we know for sure is that no matter how beautiful they are, whatever the lust right. will fade, and you'll end up with nothing. But if you work toward love, something that's spiritual, getting to know people, communicating, understanding who they are, learning their background and their history and asking questions about how they would handle certain situations. You know, when you when you when you express love, love is it's not just the emotion, it's it's being interested in the other person. 
you know it's it's not um uh you know we we, we sometimes make love so kind of laissez-faire but it, it has a tangible presence and when you're saying nice things to people and you're mm -hmm. complimenting them mm -hmm. when you are um, when you're interested in a person's situation, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe interested enough they didn't even ask you, but you just want to pour some love in because you heard something that might, you know, that's that's love, you know. And uh, we need to be more interested in people rather than people's bodies. And I know it ain't easy. It ain't easy. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. That's a hard no, one no, for no, every single person who whoever walked the globe. That's a hard. It is to keep your mind. From undressing people, especially if you if you in sex mode or you got a sexual spirit about you, that you have a tendency to look at people in a sexual way. Right. I believe you have a tendency to look at people in a sexual way, right. and so now your mind is full of lust mm -hmm. because you're always undressing people every time you walk around a grocery store or whatever you're you're lusting at the whole world and what you're doing is you're spending a whole bunch of negative energy because that's not the path of righteousness if it was the path of righteousness it would produce good fruit mm -hmm. but we can see right now it doesn't produce good fruit that, you know sometimes you have to look at life in just in just the the, the the spirit of things that if if you do something and it doesn't work or it doesn't produce good then it must be bad Hmm. Right? It, it has to be working against you. It's not working for you. And so lust does not work for us. And there's a lot of lust in this world. There's a lot of people who have now begun to use their minds to touch other people in the same room from across the room. And uh, that is a lustful spirit. And what they oftentimes can't see, this is just Craftmatic's version of it, uh -huh. what they oftentimes can't see is that everything that you do with your mind produces or or it magnifies, produces, or expresses some type of energy. Right. Right? And so if I'm producing energy that, that uh, I'm using my mind to touch someone across the room, that I'm using the spirit of energy negatively. Mm. Right? I'm using, I'm using energy that's supposed to be, God meant for it to be for healing. God meant for it to be for revelation. God meant for it to be for something good, but I'm using it for something bad. And when I use it for something bad, it's like I'm you I, I got a crane and I'm digging I'm digging at someone out here. But what the universe will do is take a crane behind you and dig the ground from under your feet. And he'll bring you low by way of your own negative thinking. See, when we when we misuse what God gave us in our thinking, then he, it has to work against us because we can't create mountains. You know, we can't climb mountains out of misusing God's power and misusing God's purpose. And so that is the spirit of lust. It's wrongly thinking about a person sexually as a perverted set of thoughts, right? And you, we have to ask you, this is kind of a next way into the subject and, uh, and we'll move on, but we have to ask ourselves the question that if if I'm going to invite my, my, my boy over to my house for a barbecue, I got to know that my boy ain't going to be lusting at my lady. Mm. Right? I want to know that he's not going to be, you know, um, the kind of person who, you know, always be trying to walk up close to her and halfway touch her on the ass and be, you know what I'm saying? That ain't your boy. That, that, but listen, that's what the lustful spirit will do. Whether he is my boy or not, he he's operating out of a spirit. You see what I'm saying? It's it's real, and and you you'll find that there are some people who you cannot bring around your close ones right. because they misuse the power. Right? They'll be they'll be uh, violating your your mother or your family member uh, when y'all just there to have a good time. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna give up one. Uh, you know, I, I used to break code myself, not about how you're talking. Yeah, but you know, yeah, unless for the same, I see a person yeah. and I'm like, yo, man, that girl, and I go after her. Yeah, and it's more like a lust because I seen her and, and there's a twinkle in my eye. I'm like, yo, I, I want to find out what she about. So it it started off like that, but I'm gonna tell you, a strong woman will kill her half of that stuff that when you're going for it because she let me know that you you ain't gonna rap at me like that, right? You know, right? But I like the fact that you came to me. I like that but too, man. I'm gonna stop you right here. Yeah. Now at that point, it's called a check, and it could be a make. It's up to you. But my whole thing is, she showed me that she would not be disrespected, 
and she's going to demand some respect at that point. Yes. And I've been taught to show respect. Yes. So at that point, my whole demeanor changed. Right. So again, even I acted out of character for a moment, mm -hmm. but a person was able to show me that it's bigger than what I was acting. Because again, when people allow you and you get comfortable doing things, your bad behavior will continue. Yeah, yeah it will continue. And, and just one quick segue before we go on to a quote for the day, mm -hmm. that um, sometimes lust chases us. Lust mm -hmm. chases us. When Women, when you wear these outfits, oh, and you got those, you know, we can see things, and, you know, you, you, you just you create a lustful environment in our world, and it really hinders our ability to focus sometimes. Show us, show us, show us it hinders <laughs> men's ability to focus, you know? Now, I'm pretty disciplined, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm, you know, left a lot of that stuff behind, yeah. but um, I don't like to be tempted. You know, and uh, and and I don't think you know. I I know men who do like to be tempted because that's all they gonna ever see. <laughs> <laughs> what they see in the street, all they ever see, and they never gonna bring that beautiful girl home. You know. I'm just saying. So, um, um, we, you know, be careful, ladies. Try not to tempt the world as much as you can. Yeah. I know it ain't easy when you're looking in the mirror and you see how beautiful you look, and you want to share that with the world. But uh, you know, you you make married men do things and you and you make single men want to do things so uh just be careful with all that lust in the world there's just no need for it and it just hurts our spirit right <laughs> <laughs> wow i didn't know we was gonna go there okay i didn't either yeah but we're well, talking about lust right? it, it is definitely it's about um, lust it's it's with uh tv and it's in the atmosphere it's everywhere it's in the clothing it's, everywhere. it's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on there. yes it will make you feel like i want that in that but hold on just remember how I met that person yeah and I walked up on it yeah just because everybody else do it please understand your morals and your value you do not have to follow what you do not care for Absolutely. if a person is gonna look at your clothing and call you out your name because of what you wear I would say that person is still wrong but I would ask yourself are you bringing too much attention to yourself? Are you bringing too much attention and, and to yourself? And my whole thing, if you're a beautiful person, you shouldn't have to. Yeah. And if you're an ugly person, you don't have to bring too much of yourself to bring attention yeah. to what already they probably won't like. Yeah, and if you do attract that kind of attention by wearing that kind of stuff, uh -huh. then you gotta know how to handle it. Well, I agree. You see what I mean? Know. Yeah, most, you know, we, we find a lot of women, I don't know, That's I think nice. women love to reject. Sometimes. Love to reject. They you love know, reject. in the club, it you makes, know, we maybe had it makes them feel powerful to you reject. You remember what we you know? went through? Because, you know, you yeah, fucked you, my We yeah. went to the club, we had to go to the table, and we picked the wrong one. Oh, we got shut down. Yes, sir. And you uh, might as well forget about talking to the next one, because they're going to be talking about you so bad. Yeah, yeah. Listen, they ain't got that next one. Oh, that's on the subject. I, never, I didn't go to the table. I went to the table a few times, but mostly I just waited till she got yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. We ain't going to be giving the cornball session yet. But so, uh, we'll get listen, back later. It was a fantastic show. Uh, we'd love for you to folks to check it out. We're all over the internet, bartalkwithj.com, you uh, YouTube, yep. Facebook, uh -huh. Spreaker, Periscope, yep. iTunes, yep. Uh, Meet Me, Meet Me, meet me. Uh, POF, yeah, yeah. Yeah. anywhere else you want to go. Sites, right? You name it, we go. We okay. Black Planet. Listen, share uh, us, on, like we us. We on Craigslist. Yeah. <laughs> Let go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> offer up. Share us, like us, subscribe. Share us, like us, subscribe. Uh, we want to get the great word out about what we're doing here at Bar Talk with Jay. Just liberate minds and souls to be the greatest possibility. So um, let's move on to our quote for the day. We got just a few minutes before we go to break. And actually, we don't have a few minutes before we go to break. So uh, I might cover some of this uh, in the next section. But our quote for the day, built and signed and sealed by Barbara, who is not here tonight. But thank you, Barb, for all that you do. And uh, shouts out to Macon, Georgia, always putting it down. The, the quote goes, like all tools we are given, we have to learn to adapt and share with each other the old and the new in order to survive the struggle we're in today, to develop the strength of the future. Now, it sounds like what she's talking about is a lot of times there's always a gap between generations mm -hmm. right she's saying we, we need to find a way to bridge the gap we, we we like all tools we have to learn to adapt and share with each other the old and the new mm -hmm. 
in order to survive the struggle that we're in today. And we know uh, that a lot of young folks don't really understand the struggle that we've been through. They really don't get what uh, unfolded. Uh, you know, you know, 50, 70 years ago, uh, it was it was bad stuff. And uh, when you understand where our people have come from, you can understand perhaps how to maneuver through the obstacles of today, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, race concerns, etc. Uh, we've learned that um, shouting off at the mouth just don't get you nowhere, right? And uh, there are a lot of young folk who need to understand that message, right? The popping off at the mouth don't get you anywhere, especially when you're out in a lonely place with blue lights in your, in your rearview mirror. Uh, keep your mouth shut. Say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and uh, follow the rule until you can get to the law. And I'm not necessarily talking about the police, but the law, it, the law will protect you if you find your way uh, to the law. But you can't get to the law getting bust across the head out in the middle of nowhere because you're popping off at the mouth, right? That doesn't work. And when you understand the struggle we've gone through, you'll be able to understand how to manage yourself and carry yourself in such situations. And so there's a lot of old knowledge that does need to be passed down to the new. How we do that, I'm really not sure. Um, but posing the question perhaps is uh, a great start to, uh, to finding some answers. Mm -hmm. I think we're bridging it right now. Yeah. We, we're picking a whole effort yeah. and not just sitting on the couch. Yeah, you know, now that I mention it, mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing here right now is passing the old uh, down to the new. Hold on, hold on, hold right. on, hold on, hold on, with that old, hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, 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 we're, we're passing, we're passing, you know, yeah, yeah. 30, 40, 50 years that. of real experience mm -hmm. into the hands of people who may have never gone through that stuff. I they will that. face it. You will face a relationship where somebody's cheating on you. You will face a relationship where, you know, the boss doesn't like you or trying to fire you. You will face a relationship where you have to fire somebody. You will face a time where you have to dig in and, and capture your vision and understand your goals and you get laser focused in life. And so all of this is passing down information from the, from the, from the past to the, uh, the, the future generation in hopes that uh, you can grasp some of this good knowledge and save yourself years of mistakes and years of problems and years of uh, regrets. So um, let's go ahead and take a break. Tonight's topic is let's talk about technology. All right. Social media, cell phones, GPS, etc. How do they affect and influence our lives? You folks stay tuned. We got a great show lined up for you. We thank you for being here with us tonight. And uh, we'll be right back with more Bar Talk with Jay right after this. And then I had to get that person that you know look like you that ain't you, hope you'll never be you, but he gonna give them corn balls a session. That being my man Jamal. Jamal, how you doing, big baby? Man, what kind of what kind of what kind of crap was going on? Well, man, we trying to make it happen, man. We trying, we trying, but we trying to figure out how your day went, you know, see how you gonna come out today. Man, another day, another victim. Another day, another victim. Another day, another victim. Another day, oh, another, Lord. another day, another victim. Is yeah. that what I heard? Okay, okay. Another victim. Another victim. Yeah, I, I know what that means, but uh, you know, <laughs> I ain't gonna be inclined to ask too many questions, man. Well, uh, listen, man, it's good to. Went out this weekend, the Fat Tuesday, right? Okay. So I got my family in town, so it's just like you know, we gonna show my season. It's shown up on the dance floor, a couple of bad females. Right. I picked one up, Puerto Rico. I ain't saying I gave it for my sister, but you know that Latina heat. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So I'm dancing, enjoying the night. Exchange uh -huh. numbers, bad. Let me see what's happening. Okay. Uh oh. So now when I talk to Shirley, guess what? What? The ex that left the door open. He even left the girl so scarred and really didn't take no effort to put in. Right. She just wanted somebody to give her some attention because she felt like nobody could really care. Cornballs. Certainly, if you got a good woman, stick with the one you got. Don't be out here trying to be a player. Right. Do not me. Somebody like me go show your girl the attention that she's been missing. Right. 
it is fair game. I don't care how long y'all broke up. No take backs. Once I get in there. <laughs> no no oh, take backs, huh? <laughs> no take backs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He said, ain't no Walmart receipts. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take that back. Can't take that back. That yeah. nasty crap. Yeah. Uh, crap, you, you go ahead and tell me nasty. Go ahead. Who That's is? like a love one. Go ahead and tell me. No, nah, I'm not nasty, bro. You know, tell tell Jamal he nasty. You know you don't want to tell him. You ain't going to tell him? No, nah, I ain't going to yeah. tell him. No, nah, I ain't going to tell him. I'm nasty. No. Oh, yeah, you know you're nasty. No, no. I mean. I'm good. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's confidently nasty. Right. Right. Same. <laughs> but listen. What he just what he just described what is um, I, I hate to say it, but it's it's kind of normal. Sound like a lustful moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like last week. It's, it's kind of normal. I mean, right. you, uh, when you meet somebody, and see, uh, that's part of the thing that challenges love in the world is that um, you know technology has got us just meeting so many people. If you want to meet so many people. And um, I'm not necessarily talking about social media. I'm just talking about if you meet somebody, you can, you can communicate with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you know, text, email, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That, um, you know, you meet people and, you know, if you're not making some zest or some zeal, you know, in the first week or two weeks, or a couple of days, you know, it probably ain't going down, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part, it's probably really, not going really, down. Really, I mean, the fire is going to be hottest early in the game. And if it's not going to be hot, then it's not going down. So, yeah, we know. We, we know that um, men and women are meeting one another. They may have a dinner. They may go to an event, a movie or whatever. And next thing you know, they're back on somebody's couch or in somebody's bed. And they're having sex. And, okay. um, you know, I don't know that yeah. that makes them bad people or if that makes them nasty. But, um, you know, it's real in the world. And, you know, we, we should exercise more restraint perhaps um mm. but you got a lot of people in the world who are not looking for love mm. and so uh now you got somebody who could potentially be on a rampage uh in that whole lust physical world but uh if they manage it then i guess really is i don't know just a player tactic you know what i mean <laughs> it's just what players do and i ain't just talking about men uh, there's a lot of female players in the world, a lot of women players in the world. Uh, even women know women players in the world. So um, mm. it's real, and uh, you know we appreciate your, your approach to the subject. We're glad it turned out so well. Yeah. Uh, for know, him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about for, so? Are you digging this chick, man? Is she is she something special, or you know she just whoa 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 whoa? <laughs> oh, that answers my question. Yeah, basically. You said you both. You said special? In a week, that's the movie. We don't know about special until, you know, after the third time I hit it, and I'm like, wiper's on the other end. I told you it's a less remote. <laughs> I heard you a couple weeks ago saying, you know, I found a girl I'm like, teaching with. Yeah, okay. Um, like, what? I'm still meeting at the end of the day, and that special talk? We don't throw it out to random girls just because you got a pretty face. Right. Pretty face don't mean special. Pretty face means you a liable victim. Right. And if you right. turn out to be a good one, I'll take you off the casualty of one of them. You wild boy. You are wild. You are uh, wild. I see that okay. Okay. I um. I can. You know. I can certainly identify with that approach. I. You know. I. I do. I, I, I find a way. Do you remember I heard AP last week? Right. AP was telling y'all, oh, what, hey, I don't know about that 60 years of that marriage type talk. Nigga, who expected me to be faithful that long? That's, that's consistently one dude or one woman for the rest of my life. I don't know. I get booked. But AP said it. Y'all said she was a savage. Don't get mad at me. Because I feel the same day. <laughs> 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 Sometimes I don't want my food just regular and bland. I might need a little bit of spice. Okay. Sometimes okay. Spice it up. Okay. Well, you know, you know what's interesting about that is that uh, we all have to look ourselves in the mirror, okay. and you know, ultimately that means that um, if you don't see yourself living with somebody forever uh, or having one special mate, then I would imagine the people you attract don't see you, perhaps as a keeper and somebody to have forever. 
So, you know, you, you know, you got to look at both sides of the coin. And ultimately, you know, a relationship is all about individualized sacrifice to experience love together. You know what I mean? It's about, it's about, it's about, I might, I might give up this supernatural sex life uh, in order to have uh, somebody who got my back. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who yeah. can help make some exactly. make some things happen and uh, raise my kids and take care of my home and uh, help take care of my life. So, you know, catch 22. Exactly. It's a catch 22, and I'm so glad you say that because I want you to look at Bone's face when I say this. Yeah. Because yeah. it's amazing. You can have a woman, Bone, I'm not going to say uh-huh. her name. I ain't going to do you like that, bro. Uh-huh. But you have a woman who be so interested in you, no matter how many times you tell them, hey, I'm playing the field, hey, I ain't in the mood for no relationship, they will try their hardest just because you give them a level nine type loving, now they stuck and they want the whole commitment. Bone, you know who I'm talking about. She'll get you some silk sheets and the man who can sleep on them, I ain't gonna call her name for nothing, but they get territorial like that. Now, how nice and blunt and direct you tell them, I'm not looking for nothing committed. And sometimes getting still, that's yeah. the word that keep coming up. And I don't understand why they be cussing like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell you. Go ahead. Because you know, he, he ain't got a problem trying to throw me under the bus, but yeah, he, it's kind of hard to throw. He saved, he saved you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, just, he brought a great point to the to the. Well, to he the gave table. a point that, that I even I have to go through though. Right. He, he, that point is off of me. And one of the things that, again, I say, and, and I say this when I'm out there, because in the dating world, like you said, if you really feel like you want to try some different things and you don't want to be just with one person, be upfront. Number one, quit acting like you want to be with just a person and then make that person feel like you only with them. And you know you want to be with other people. You know you want to be with other so people. So if you just really, saying, uh, yeah, just be back up and understand your time is valuable just like hers. Right. And if you want a certain thing, guess what? You might find out, and I found this out. When you communicate and you really talk to a person, two things, either they can accept or they don't. But at least at that point, they respect that you at least told them. Right. What I don't like is the disrespect by feeling like I'm going to lead you, knowing I ain't leading you nowhere. That right there goes on all the damn time. All the time. And it doesn't make any sense. I had no plans on going down this road with you, but I went down this road with you. At one point, you gotta hold yourself accountable. You know, you can say, well, she's just a victim of circumstance. But at what point do you understand you reckless? Yeah, you reckless. Yeah, you going you're down reckless. a path yeah. wrecking everybody, yeah. but you still wanna blame them. Right. So you're not gonna change. Mm-hmm. My whole thing is, I'm not trying to go down a reckless path because I'm trying to do something positive, right? better than what I was before. My whole thing is I've been enlightened. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times people be like, well, that means you should just be the one. Don't put me in a category until I put myself, I had to love myself first. Yeah. So a lot of people ain't even fell in love with themselves, but they want somebody. Right. And that's where I felt like, you know me, I'm a different beast. So I'm gonna tell you straight up how I am. I can't tell you where you at. Right. And I'm not trying to lead you. Yeah. My whole thing is just accept me for understanding me. Right. That's where the love starts, right there, with me. Mm-hmm. Right there. Right there. Right there. Don't play. Right there. Right. That's that smooth taste. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of it, it could be for that love, a little bit of that love, but that's that smooth, Corn, real taste. Cornballs, what that man said is, tell them up front. Tell them up front. And females, you can be a cornball too, because if we tell you, and this is something we keep repeating, if we tell you who we are up front, accept what we told you. Don't be trying to change us unless we say, man, we're trying to make some changes with you. Unless I say that, what I told you is what it is. Don't get your feelings hurt to be trying to change the rules of the game. Right, right. Um, one thing that came to mind during that dialogue, and it's about time for us to go to break. Yeah. Um, it just seemed to me we really need some women here on the panel so so they can combat this. I wish AP was here because I'm sure she yeah, would have AP would, to say. Would, would and, go. and AP, yeah. if you happen to be listening, call in. Just call in to Jay's phone right. and we'll plug it in and we can hear what you got to say. But um, it just seemed like Sometimes women like a little rejection, right? Wait so a minute. Oh, so, so if you say, if you say that I'm, I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm just, I'm seeing a bunch of people. I'm, you know, I'm there. That, you know, that's rejection to them. That's like, no, nah, I'm, not, I don't want you. No, nah, I'm not interested. That then it seems like you get some pursuance. Like they want to pursue you a little more. 
uh, a, a little t a little harder. You what what you say about that, Jamal? Boy, when I say listen, you reach it. When you go after a female, she already got you. She on you got her. She got your attention. The whole nine yards. Right. But if you ever tell a woman like, "Hey, you're not the only one," to, hey, you know, I ain't ready to settle down yet. Cause so they take that as a personal challenge for some reason, and they might like it because now they they put the draws on in the relationship, and now they hunting you. Like they don't want to hear, "Oh, I can't get you." That's like a, almost a personal challenge to a woman who's been pretty all her life to get the dude she wants. Right. The minute you tell her no, you know what I don't know, but you might find out you get a second and a third phone call from this female. Yeah, yeah. Now she, yeah. Hey, trying to say, hey, fellow cornballs, yeah. why yeah. might say no to the female? I know you might like her. It might be good strategy to tell her no when she asks you to come over and talk. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, you know what that I'm thinking. You know. You know what I'm thinking right now that, uh, th and this is kind of psychosomatic, and you know we can never psychosomatic, you know, the race of women because they're just beautiful in their own way. But um, sometimes if you tell a woman that you're not interested in a relationship, you just want to hang out, kick it, or whatever, that very well could be a lifestyle she's interested in. Yeah. That she, you know, she may, oh, she may, even though she, even though she wants a relationship, she may be interested in just hanging out and having a good time and not having no ties and connections and you know whatever that you know entanglement. Uh, just have a good time. Uh, you know that can be quite fulfilling, mm -hmm. if you, uh, especially if you don't have anybody in your life, <laughs> right? Uh, that she one kid. would know that's the move because if you come at a man like that, that's the easiest way to catch a man in a commitment and not even realize. It. Right. Just be cool with the dude, talk, chill, smash, hey, be, make it smooth transition. Yes. And before you know it, yes. those two separate lines yes. are in the same direction, somehow merging the one. Yes, I can tell you. You tell me, yes, we going in for a relationship, somehow somebody going to mess up. Right. No. Right, so listen. If you just let me be me, before you know it, all of a sudden, I might hit you, baby. You know, I don't really feel like messing around with yes. somebody else. I think that, I just want you. That's you exactly what's like going to happen. That's how you... Yes. And listen, that's exactly how it's gonna happen. Just like that, bro. That's exactly how it goes down. Y'all snitching. Y'all are snitching. No, we we know. Y'all telling really... the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling the game. That's exactly how it's going down. See, women women just don't quite get it that that they make their presence known. And they just sit there and just chill. That's all they gotta do. Sit there and chill. And what's gonna happen is because she's not pursuing me, I'm gonna be interested in pursuing her. Right? If there's a connection there, because she's not pursuing me, I'm gonna be interested in pursuing her. And it works vice versa, right? So because I'm not interested in pursuing her, she's interested in pursuing me. Right? And you know, it, it, yeah, man, I'm telling you, that's the that's the, the dynamic laws of physics and quantum mechanics, right okay, there. Okay, so we're going to have to rewrite <laughs> the universal book. Universal, right there, bro. Now, watch this. Because you say it like that, but this, this. Now, I, we can talk like this for the single folks, but for the married folks, women, I promise you, just try this one time with your man. Right. He's going to get you the best Valentine's Day gift on God dang on July 19th. Right. If you do it like this. Right. Married folks. You know, sometimes a man or woman will come home and be sitting in the, girl, in the driveway for a minute and not walk in the house. Right. Especially men, right. just because you know what, before I get in, I don't want to hear your mouth. Right. I need about 15 to 20 minutes when I walk in the door to deprogram from work, my people calling me on the way home. I just need a minute to myself. Women, if you attack your man with the good, the bad, or whatever, as soon as he walks in the door, he's never had a minute to do de-escalate or just come back to who he is for mm -hmm. that brief moment mm -hmm. however if you give that man a moment to just whew, got home six, seven, 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 just give me a minute and then you if you just have dinner on the table with the shot right there boom food right boom and don't talk to him just give him a minute once he starts eating or once he's done he might just sit back and go Hey, baby, how was it today? That's exactly and what he's going to he do. Now he's listen to you. That's exactly. Listen. Now he's in the yes. headspace to hear you, and he's not tuning you out. You gave him a second to catch up to you. But if you just jump, so wait, you're not talking to me? Are you just in your phone? Oh, you know what you have me talking? But this girl, now you sound like the most nagginess robot ever, and why aren't you listening to me? Yeah. You don't care about, oh my gosh. 
Yeah, see, that's and, what we and, feel and, like. Yeah, and that's a whole lesson in you got to keep the chase going in a relationship. Uh, yeah, it, it's parties. unfortunate you have to, both parties have to both keep parties. the chase going. Listen, we got to take a break. Uh, we're actually way over right now. Uh, but you folks stay tuned. You can already see we are on fire tonight oh, oh. and uh, doing our thing big oh, time. Listen. So uh, y'all hold on. We're going to be right back with more Bar Talk with Jim. These artists, they're going their home. They're saying, they're just saying very unique things, man. And uh, you know, sometimes the, the the older generation pushes away, you know, some of the the younger music because uh, they just, they just can't feel the vibe, you know. But they're really saying some deep stuff, man. And uh, we really we really should spend a little more time uh, listening to some it's of these younger artists. Up. Quit being so biased. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what we say about this person that's coming up next. Because okay. if he had a bad day, I'm telling you, you're going to be really biased. I don't even know about bias. You might be mad at what he's about to say. But I got to give it to my man, Jeffrey. How you doing, big baby? Uh, right. There you go. With What's happening with you, man? We doing good over here. Mm -hmm. uh, always glad to have you in the house, so to speak. How are you doing tonight, man? Man, this is the second day of spring. Everything is lovely. The sun was out. Mm -hmm. Traffic was bad as all get out, but we're not going to let that stop us because uh, <laughs> you know what time it is. Yes, sir. It is time for you to close your mouth and listen. You ask me some questions, I give you some answers for a man's point of view. Okay. Now, I got one reason for the habitually single woman and one reason for the habitually single man as to why they might be single. But before we get into that, here is my disclaimer. All right. Now, see, I'm going to talk about my not-body, even if it doesn't play you, I want you to put your foot up in this shoe. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't apply to you, I want you to put both feet in both shoes, walk around in it, because you're about to learn something tonight. Ladies, you go first. All right. Now, ladies, this is real easy. Some of y'all answers are single because you don't really want a man. You just want an accessory. Mm -hmm. You want that man to be available when you want him to be available. You want that man to come serve you up when you want him to serve you up. You want that man to be accountable when you want him to be accountable. You want him to be on your dime, your time, and your behind when you want him. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. You can't treat a grown man like that. Because, see, what will happen is the grown man will recognize, first of all, that if that's what he wants, he's going to figure out a way to be in control of it. Or second of all, if it's not what he wants, He's not going to deal with it. Right. Now, ladies, I understand, you know, having an accessory comes with no responsibility, and that's what you're really trying to do. You want all the, uh, the dressings of a relationship with no responsibility of what comes with the relationship. And as long as you keep driving in that direction, well, you're going to keep on driving on that lonely street in your car by yourself. Sink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and for a very, very long, long time. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, mm. I, all of these really kind of cross over. I know this is for the ladies, but, you know, to be treated as an accessory just don't work. Mm. I need more substance than that in my life. And uh, you can't just get it when you want it. You know, it's got to be a mutual thing. You know what I mean? Mm. If you're just trying to get it when you want it, you could be using me. Oh, you're sorry. Maybe, maybe it was offended at. Yeah, not maybe for a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> I can be mad. Yeah, but they don't say, you know, say that, 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 that not wanting responsibility. That's, oh. you know, that's maybe You got to be, a, yeah. Now, resp responsibility in, in a dating scenario is, you know, you know what the hell you went Friday night? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> right? Like, you was out all night. You ain't called me. You ain't talked to me. So what? You know, what's up? Like, they don't want a responsibility. They might want to still trick out and whatever. So, um, you know, they don't want a man. They want an accessory. Uh, that's what they want. Let them have that. Like a Juster right next to a Buster. There you go. Oh, my And uh, back on you, Brother Jeffrey. It's all yours. I'm 
bless. All right, fellas, don't think I'm letting y'all off the hook. You never do. Brother, <laughs> you are next. All right, fellas, some of you are, some, are single simply because you fear your own brilliance. Mm -hmm. You know what's really inside of you. You know that you got the tools, and you know you got everything that you need already at your disposal. Mm -hmm. But you're scared. You're scared to really step into your own brilliance and your own potential and realize it because it comes with an awesome responsibility. Mm -hmm. It comes with the responsibility of actually having to lead a household. Right. It comes with the responsibility of actually having to defend the women in your community. Mm -hmm. It comes with the responsibility of actually having to set an example for the children, the boys and the young girls growing up behind you. You don't want to do that. You don't want to put it to work. You just want to be fly. Mm -hmm. You just want the fly and shoot. Mm -hmm. You just want that good attention. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to do the work because you're scared of your own brilliance. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I need you to hear me and understand me clearly. Oh. Women might fall for potential all day once they realize that it's just potential and it's never reality. Well, they go potentially leave your ass, I'm sorry, they're not potentially going to leave your ass, they are actually going to leave your ass. <laughs> so I want you to go ahead and step into your brilliance because there is nothing more attractive to, uh, to a woman than a man who has his stuff together. Yes, sir. You get your stuff together, watch the women start flocking towards you. You stay where you at, but your ass is going to stay sick. <laughs> Man, you know, when you were saying that into your brilliance, I, I, I was like, you know, that's a shoe I want to put on. But then I went in. There's a point and it didn't really fit me. But I was scared because a lot of times when you are stepping out, when I left corporate America and I stepped out there into the entrepreneurship of um, Roll Off, uh, totally with no support of a check coming in. It's totally me generating everything. Yeah. It's a whole different mindset. But I had to embrace a fear to get over a fear. And that right there just lets you know that it was that time. And everybody gotta understand the process. Because again, it ain't just a fear. Please understand, everything ain't meant for you. I had to go through some things to get myself prepared for what I jumped myself into. Yeah. And I had to have a work hard endurance yeah. type spirit yeah because believe me it wasn't good stuff coming yeah now, right watch, now watch this let's turn that let's turn that into, into what jeffrey's saying that you know you you mentioned at the beginning of the year you had an interest in you know maybe having the mrs Wright come into your world yeah, yeah, yeah. and so uh you, you're gonna have to you know um mm -hmm. you, you Get your own fear or your own brilliance out of the way because at a certain point you're going to have to start taking responsibility and responsibility for her means maybe taking care of the kids getting mm -hmm. them back and forth to school it could be uh you know helping support the bills because she's out of work or she you know mm -hmm. having a challenging job or trying to switch jobs and and you know that's the responsibility the responsibility to lead a household is what he's talking about right. that's the fear and that's no, the I fear agree. of our own brilliance we know we're capable of it but we don't want to accept the responsibility and uh, responsibility is work. Uh, it really is work. And so that's why we, we oftentimes, and I think many people, especially in their 30s and 40s, might look over their shoulders and say, hey, you know what? That was a real good person. I just didn't take ownership of what I was supposed to take ownership of. I'd have had that person in my life mm -hmm. today, right? Uh, I should have helped, you know, with the rent and buy the house and go ahead and commit to getting married and all that other stuff. Uh, don't be willing, don't be, don't be fearful of taking ownership of um, the responsibilities of a relationship. And that's what Jeffrey is really talking right. about. That's why we stay single, because we don't take ownership of those responsibilities. I mean, I, I get that. But if you ain't ready, then yeah. don't take ownership yeah. just because. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. again, that's why I said it fit and it didn't fit. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, I ain't got that part. Yeah. Je Help and the rest of the hell, I got that. And Jeffrey, listen, I want you to come <laughs> back, but I got to say this. As you were saying, uh, you know, as you were sharing this, this piece, uh, the first thing that came to my mind is I think there are a lot of men who perhaps are ready, but they're they're balancing readiness with who they got in front of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you can court somebody for a while and you can fall in love with them, but you just might not feel the 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 the, the go ahead right yet 
or maybe you're trying to learn some more stuff or look for something, but you know, we, we might not mind the responsibility, but we don't want to be uh, taken or taken advantage of. Or we don't want to, you know, we don't want to jump in too fast and take too much responsibility because we don't know this person well enough. So uh, I don't know what you would say to that, but uh, I'm going to hand the mic back over to you, my friend. Man, you know, that kind of dovetails right into me bringing all this together. Now, mm -hmm. men and women, the main thing that we have to recognize, women, you cannot dumb down the relationship with a man to that of a curse. There is no way that you can bring those two things in congruency. Men, what we have to do is we have to recognize that the man ain't holding us down. Don't get it wrong. There's a whole bunch of institutionalized barriers that are set spe uh, specifically for us. I ain't talking about that. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is the barriers that are in our heads. Once we remove those barriers, once we say, you know what, I can do whatever I want to do, and as a matter of fact, I am going to do it. Then what happens is there's a value, an intrinsic value that women see in us. And when they see intrinsic value, they no longer regard us as a temporary thing or something that's a passing trend or anything like that, much less an accessory. So what I'm saying to the men and the women, we have to shift our focus from our flaws to our future. And we focus on our future. We see our communities being rebuilt. We see our homes intact. We see our children living whole lives and growing up to be productive men and women in that same community building wealth. And once we start building wealth in our own communities, watch how bad everybody starts to pay attention. It's a dangerous thing when men and women move in concert, not because it causes anyone a threat, but because it's dangerously powerful, like dynamite. Dynamite ain't nothing if you like the fuse. So if you just leave it alone, it's okay. So if you just leave us alone, we gonna be okay. Yeah. But you come at us wrong, you gonna have some trouble. Yes, sir. And that's all I got. Mm. That's, that's all. Ain't nothing else need to be said. What? Right, man. That is, uh, that's actually quite profound, <laughs> right? It really is. And uh, God, Jeffrey, you always bring it so hard. Um, tonight's subject, Brother Jeffrey, is um, you know can can be a subject that's all over the place. And so I want to try to narrow it down. What I'm asking you to do in your answer is to be, uh, you know, obviously the leader you are, but uh, you know, be be quite political, be quite uh, sociological development type. Uh, you know, in your response to this. It sounds like you're leading. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying because I, what, what I want this entire subject to lead to is what's wrong with it or what needs to happen to better it or where are we missing the mark? What needs to happen to society in order to overcome the hurdles that we face in technology? That's where I really want the subject to go to. So the, qu the question for tonight is let's talk about technology. Social media, cell phones, GPS, etc. How do they influence our lives? Okay, I got, I got you. Now, from a societal standpoint, you will know that the digital divide is something that is institutionalized to make sure that the have continue to have and the have not continue to struggle. That's what I'm talking That's about. the way it's set up from an institutional standpoint. Yes. Uh, in addition to that, now, when it comes to the digital divide, you will have schools that are operating on something akin to 3G technology. And they're, they're down that way because of the way the school system and the tax bases are set up. So it's no different than the books. The books in the more affluent communities are better and newer because they pull from the tax base and the homeowners in that area. At the same time, the books in the community, or in the community and those schools are not as good because they don't distribute or they don't have the wealth that they, they do in the other communities. The same thing goes along with the digital divide. There are places in Georgia where you don't even have basic internet service. Right. Because they haven't expanded to that area yet. And guess who gets impacted by that? Right. The minorities, they get impacted the most. Uh, so I, I need you to understand that technology is a wondrous thing when used proportionately and used correctly. It can be the reason for one community doing well Ooh. and the other one not so well Ooh. when yes. it's not applied equally. Yes. And that's what's happening right now. Yes, yes. Oh my God. That's what that's exactly what I was talking mm -hmm. about, my friend. Yeah, because <laughs> because 
that wakes all of us up. It does. That that wakes us all up. Uh, that wakes me up because I I really hadn't thought about it, and really have no exposure to anything that's going to teach me what's really going on in in those communities. Um, yeah, there are a uh, a whole host of people being held back because they don't have access to the information, and that is what. Um, you know, that technology is supposed to increase the pace of information. That's what technology does. It increases, it, it cuts down time and it, um, you know, and it gives you more information, more opportunities, more, um, more power in your life. That's what it's supposed to do. But uh, there is a, you know, there is a political agenda to hold some folk back. And, um, and that is a part of technology that we really haven't addressed, as particularly as a people. We really don't know what's going on. I have often asked the question, when, uh, when credit companies, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, score a black person, is it any different than they score white folk? Because if they are scoring black folk different, Let's just say, you know, maybe there is a chance they scored us 30 points lower or 40 points lower. That reduces, dramatically reduces our ability to get credit and to buy homes and cars and lead successful lives. So now there is an agenda to hold folk back through technology. And of course it is happening everywhere and uh, it's something we need to, uh, to really address. Uh, and I thank you, Brother Jeffrey, for bringing that to the table. Uh, I love Digital Divide. I think we're going to use that. We're going we're going to use that we're going use forward. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Like that. Uh, because it's a tactic to divide and uh, and you know we really as leaders need to be understanding that, man. I'm I'm so unaware right now, but I can see it uh, you know potentially happening in so many different fields of human endeavor. It, it's not even funny, you know. From your credit application coming through, you know, does your credit application get not credit application, does your job application get pushed to the back of the line in those internet sources? What happens to our information when it goes out? Uh, is it being assessed properly? And we don't know because there's a lot of technology between us and knowing what's happening there. So thank you so much, Brother Jeff. Any parting words for us, my friend? Oh man, just very quickly, the credit score isn't supposed to score differently. It's just supposed to take the, the criteria they have and come up with a score. Yeah. Here's what happens though. The banks will get that information and you'll have someone who's credit worthy and they find out they're a minority on the application. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they will slow walk the application. Yes. They'll ask for these documents and these documents, hoping that something goes awry. Yeah. And then when something goes awry and your credit score drops, guess what they do? Now you're not qualified for the loan. Right. The closing rate for minorities is almost double as far as the number of days than it is for people who are not minority. Last thing that wow. I've done, wow. I heard something the other day that said this. There was someone who was given a home mortgage loan who made $10 an hour. There was someone else who was minority who made fifty to $60,000 who could not get a loan because they slow walked they slow walked her application. Mm -hmm. And when they finally had something that hit her that she didn't even know about, they dropped her score, they refused her the loan. Mm -hmm. This stuff is happening now. Yes. Redlining is still happening right now. Yes. So don't think that the detectology helped. All it did, it made it slicker, it made it easier for them to draw those red lines. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we gotta be on top of our game. Yet and still, totally, even, even more. Uh, thank you so much, Brother Jeffrey. Uh, you always do a dynamic job for us and the audience, man, and uh, we appreciate your commentary. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you on next week, my friend. <clears throat> Bye, Jeffrey. All right, good night. Okay, good luck. Yeah, to get right. work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. All right, man. Yeah, look like look like he did have a good yeah, day at work. Yeah, he wasn't that uh, bad. But he still slapped across the forehead a little bit, right? Yeah, That's what he does. That's exactly what he does. All right, folks, we are uh, set up now for our next break. Uh, we're going to come back, and that's where Jay and I uh, just go in on the subject. We got TR380 in what? the building. Yes, man. Made and, his appearance. Uh, we got a couple of ladies in the studio tonight who are going to share.
uh, a hey, woman's side, a that. woman's view of the hey, subject. Hey, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this hey, well, you, you know, they, they won't get, get fired up like we normally get fired up. Because, um, you know, when we normally get fired up, we talk about relationships. But we talk a little more, a little different about technology. And, but we're going to talk about social media and internet dating. Mm-hmm. And I want to hear about all that good stuff. So, you folks stay tuned. We're going to be right back with more Bar Talk with Jay. Right after this. content y'all starting stuff i mean <laughs> <laughs> hey man but this is what we do at bar talk with jay we gotta find ways to shake you up and um and get in, uh, to a surprise even to myself i got tr380 back in the building for all y'all young people to understand the poet the person that rhymes and make things happen on the other side again i can't even give credit more than saying he's here in the building again to get that younger generation that flow and understanding that yeah. we and when we say that bridging the gap, yeah, he helps that gap. He helps that gap. With Absolutely. that communication, his skill level, oh my goodness, yeah, I feel good about the things he say and the things he brings. So yeah. again, man, how you doing, man? What's going on with you? I'm honored, man. I'm honored. I'm blessed. I'm about rock. Go ahead, man. You gotta turn me up a little bit, but yeah, oh, we man, got you, it's, we got you. life always comes with its situations. You know, we got mm-hmm. our trials and tribulations, our twists and turns. Mm-hmm. It's all about perseverance, man. It's all about. Mm-hmm. Sticking to your gun, sticking to what you know, and like you were speaking on entrepreneurship. Um, mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to transition from working a regular nine to five to mm-hmm. you know building my own brand and expanding my own business. Yes, and it is hard because a lot of people don't believe in you or support you until you get to where you need to go. Right. And then they like, oh, I knew him from way back when. <laughs> man, did help you did. Hey, <laughs> hard grind, man. It is indeed a hard grind. And y'all heard it from a young bro. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Cause I've done this for a long time as well, but again, you gotta have that drive. Yeah. And just for the fact you know you gotta have a job. Yeah. That means just the boss mentality. I'm willing to learn more, for I can become successful. I can be complete. Right. Because again, you just can't say I want something and you ain't willing to put no work in. Right. Real talk. That's that, that's like dead to me. Absolutely. I want to do something, but you don't want to even know the concept. Right. I, I'm telling you the procedures, and you don't want to listen to me. Right. Come on now. This happens every day. Yeah, it happens every day. And 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 just to, to start leading us toward the discussion for the night, tonight's topic is uh, let's talk about technology. Social media, cell phones, GPS, etc. How do they influence our lives? Now, uh, what we know about all bi- all business, 75% of all business is small business. Mm-hmm. Right. That means there's a whole lot of mom and pop shops that are making our economy what it is. And if you are going to uh, make a decent living for yourself, you are going to have to embrace technology in an effort to uh, build your product and find customers to buy it. And when, what Jay just said, what brings me to this, Jay just said, you got to be willing to put the work in. And let me tell you, folks, there is no secret in the world today. The greatest work that you can put in is to get online and start researching your craft. Right. Whatever it happens to be. Mm-hmm. If you bake cakes, if you make to- paper towels, if you do hair, if no matter what you do, you have to be uh, almost engulfed in technology in order to get to the end result. There's just no other way to do it. Um, I am starting a new company just this week. Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, I started a company. And um, you know, I've been planning for it for about three months, but now we're ready to launch. And so now I'm launching, I gotta go in and figure out how to you know, get my business incorporated, make sure my, my business has the proper insurance coverages. I need to make sure I understand um, uh, what are the raw, ro- ro- excuse me, the rules and laws of the game in my field of human endeavor. I need to figure out how to market to my ideal client. I need to find out how to uh, find the right products to service my clients with. There is an ent- a ton to learn. And my business happens to be real estate. Real estate just happens to be right there at my fingertips. Right. Mm-hmm. But if I'm not willing to put the work in, and I'm finding that it is taking substantial work, 
substantial work. I'm spending an average of two to three hours per day focused on these ventures and all of it's online. Hey. I'm building logos and business cards and I got uh, I got partners who I'm building uh, operating agreements with and I'm, I'm studying for my licensing program and I'm uh, learning uh, how to find the right investment properties and what are the good ones and what aren't and and you know even outside of technology I got to get on my GPS and I got to go to that property right. and I got to walk the property and look at the land and I got to take pictures and photos and I got to have a story to tell my investor so that uh, so that he can invest into my product. But if I'm not putting that work in, and technology really is gonna prove that the work has been done, <laughs> right? Because you might not learn that you need a certain license or a certain, you know, etc. until you get down and start reading some articles and, and some notes, some stuff that people have already done. See, that's what's so beautiful about technology. That's what's so beautiful about the internet, is that there are people there telling their stories. Right their success and their failure stories. They're, they're telling you their whole stories. If you'll just go to a company's website, you'll be able to see if they're moving fast, if they're moving slow, right. if they're got an old type of website, if they got a new type of website, if they're if they're if they got good information, if right. they're trying to play games and whatever the case may be, you gotta spend the time. So I'll leave it at that. I wanna interject on something you said though, because it is all about time and as as individuals you know we live in a society where it's based off of work you know you have to work you have to go to work to pay the bills you know yes. you gotta go to work basically if you're not doing something you're doing nothing right so when you said you you, you said something that was important to me you said i have to spend at least two to three hours a day you know investing in your own craft and it's like out of those two or three hours versus those eight or nine hours i work 12 hour shifts right you know what i'm saying but out of that time during your day two to three hours isn't much to give to yourself now when you look at a company where you barely getting by and you have to go to work the next week just to make your ends meet for this check for this two-week check like right. it's a it's a margin that a lot of people live in and live under right if you know what i'm saying Absolutely. so Absolutely. with with technology i'm gonna get into that because um it is the digital age. Um, like your boy was saying on the phone, it's a digital age. Everybody in the social media, you know, everybody trying to do something to set them aside, to make them pop in or to, so you got your models, you know, you got your, your, your rappers and your artists or whatever, these big brands that's putting themselves out in front of the people. And I feel like it's kind of oversaturated. It kind of takes away, you can find customers, you can find, you know, leads to sales and stuff on, on social media, but it ain't nothing like the ground game, man. It's nothing like, you know, back in the day when I could come up and shake your hand, like, here's my CD. You know? mm. And then five mm. or six weeks later, you know, everybody that you know got this same CD. And everybody that you know like at least one or two tracks off of this. Right. You, know? you done put right. your product out into the right. community and word of mouth spread it. So don't be so reliant on technology. That's my tip. Baby. Great. You know, don't be so tech reliant on technology. That, that's a stamp on the show because, uh, again, I, I, I want this show to be relevant. Okay? I always want something relevant to come out of it. And that's oftentimes what happens is that there are people who lean too much on technology. And there's nothing wrong with picking up the phone and making a phone call to the guy who just might fund your project. Right. Or the, 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 the organization who might give you approval for your licensing or whatever the case may be. Um, I mean, we get stuck behind these, these little walls of technology and we don't communicate with real people. Right. And it makes us just a number. Exactly. It makes us just another inquiry that's sitting in our inbox. And you don't want to be just another inquiry sitting in the inbox. You want to be different. And uh, we're never going to get rid of the, the language of people shaking hands and smiles in the face. And they can see you had on a nice suit that day. They can see you were well clean cut and shaved. They can see you took care of your shoes. They can see that um, you know you are a person who was on time. They can see that you are a person who uh, has some, some oratorical skills because you stood up during the meeting and you spoke. Uh, or you stood up during the conference call you know, and spoke and said something. Um, we cannot allow technology to do the work. Technology can build our character, but it's not going to be who we are. And, uh, and if we're always stuck behind a wall being afraid of the world, that's a major hurdle. And I got a feeling there are a lot of people, especially young folk who are growing up, 
not being in touch with real people. That technology has a tendency to keep us away from real human interaction. Yeah. And, uh, and that can be a downfall to our world. Uh, you know, ultimately, what it does is it diminishes emotional expression. Right. It diminishes the touch of the human heart. Can I give you an example of that? Please. All right, and this is kind of like, not in a sense of technology, but in a sense of business. So you got Steve Jobs, or um, it's a, I forgot the guy's name, but he's an Asian guy. He's real good with statistics, like pro probability and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. um, he became really rich doing accounting and doing finance for these companies. Um, he has like five pair of shoes. He, he drives like a Honda Civic or something like that. So a lot of people, you know, they, they transition and they think that what they see on social media because social media is for a people, for a person to put their best out, you know, this is the best image of myself. So they're not realizing that when you just bought that Fendi or you just brought that Prada or you just went and got that Lambo, like this man making billions of dollars and he just need a Honda Civic. The car drive the same. Right. You know, yours probably got a couple more horsepower than his, but y'all gonna get from A to B. And same. when y'all get from A to B, his check gonna be bigger because he knew how to invest it better. He knew about his target audience and he knew about the crowd because he was in that field. He was around people that was doing data and statistics and probability. So he created a network of those people to expand yourself. Whatever you're doing, create you a network that's going to expand your brand and that's going to, you know, Bar Talk with Jay, for example. We on here, they come on here every Thursday, you know, they live streaming podcasts, mm -hmm. they got cameras all around the room. Like, that's branding. It's going to take a minute to build, but when you got somebody else who got a brand and they come in and they co-mingle, yeah. my, my viewers become your viewers and things of that nature. Like, so it is beneficial, but I, I tell you like crap, don't lean on it too much. Absolutely. Man. And I'm going to go, I'm going to have fun with y'all. Y'all win so many different ways. Let's go back to the women. Let's go back to dating. To dating. Okay. Let's have some fun uh, with y'all. Okay. 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 Now, do y'all remember back in the day? I'm going to have some fun with y'all now. We're going back to the club days, okay? This is before social media got big. And we're going to go back with the flip phones. Uh -huh. When you go to the club with your boy, you having, you, you, you having fun, and them girls sitting at the table. And crap, know a little bit about this. You got the girls sitting at the table. You got to try to make eye contact. Okay, this everybody know about this, and I'm having fun with y'all now. And you trying to lure somebody at that table to see if they got an interest. I don't know if they like me or not. Right. But I got a confident game that I feel like that one do. Right. Now I gotta find a way to approach her because she got a bunch of her friends around her, and I know if I don't approach her correctly, they gonna they gonna jump on me. Right. And if you don't get the right one, and you try to choose another one, I'm telling you right now, you just hand yourself a foot in your own behind. Right. Because they're going to have a field day on you. Mm -hmm. But it also built up confidence. Because I'm sitting over there and I want to go speak to her. And I don't even think it's just lust at this point. It's really curiosity. I, she had a great look. I, I seen up there on the dance floor. I'm interested. So I got to shoot my best game. Right. And I got to find a way. Like I wait till she go to the bathroom. She away from everybody. To see if I can <laughs> grab her real quick. And see if there's a little connection. Right. All right. Now I'm going to give you the difference between that building you up and the rejection of that. And the rejection is her sitting at the table and she ain't interested and her girlfriend looking at you like, ah. Right. And you got that kind of embarrassment walking back to your boys and they like, ah. <laughs> it has to make you be like, okay, I'm going to have to shoot it again. Maybe I didn't dress right or whatever. But it still lets you know I'm not out of the game. Hey. Now today, I'm going to have fun with it. Now today, it's not the same not when the same. somebody goes into a, a dating site and they say they like you. Right. I don't have to put forth my best foot. Right. I don't have to, you know what I'm saying? So now I got 10 telling me I look nice and they like me, okay? I don't have to go into that with the same confidence I had before. Right. And I feel like that's kind of, I, I need to stay on my game to make sure it's where I, my vibe is. My vibe was strong enough that I can walk and I didn't care you was with your girl. Right. And I can sit down and have a conversation and have a conversation with y'all without buying all y'all a drink. Now, I ain't talking about all the ones that just want to be nice to everybody. Get that. Whatever. My whole thing is, I should be able to sit down with a conversation. I have to buy everybody a drink. Why do I have to buy everybody a drink? Why I got to buy everybody out? Ain't nobody trying. I'm just as worthy as y'all. Y'all yeah. sitting yeah. here just like me. You know but what I heard from that? Have some fun. What's that? Yeah. That 
social media has overridden personal interaction. Yes. That social media has taken away from personal interaction where you can't even, you know, have the same vibe. Like if 10 people are shooting a shot at you at the same time from a profile, which they can't really get none from, you know, you really don't have to put your best forward. That's and exactly and right. that's why, you know, so many people are lacking in personality traits yes. and people interaction skills because they don't really know how yeah. to interact with people. They've been raised off of social media. That's exactly right. And and, and just imagine that 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 whole thing taking place, kind of the, the you know, you, you, you got somebody who's, uh, and I'm not sure what age bracket this would be, but you got somebody who's, you know, 10, 12, 14 years old, you know, having to start taking chances to talk to people, you know, right. you know, and then all of a sudden there's a new way. Three or four years later, there's a new way to talk to people, and now I communicate only through these pictures and through these images, and I can always put my best foot forward and I can put my best picture out there, and so now I'm building up this great image of who I am, and I can't be that person. If I were in front of the audience who always looks at me online, if I was in front of them actually, they might not like me. Right. They might look down on me. So now I done created this huge presence that I'm really not. Right. And so now I gotta face the world timidly, right? I gotta be kind of quiet when I face the world. I gotta I can't, you know, I I can't let the world know that I'm weak or that I, I'm not that strong or I don't have it all together like that. Um uh, you know, we're buying we're buying and selling images and that is not a good thing. It's not at all. We're, the technology has caused us to buy and sell images. Images of one another. I can send you an image of who I am and you could never know. I mean, people, married people spend 20, 30 years with each other and still didn't know that didn't the know other person was going to do X, right. Y, and Z. Imagine what's happening on technology. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we know a lot of lies goes on about, you know, their pictures and what size weight they are and the age and, and mm. what they have done and what they yeah. want to do. And That's who called they manipulation are. of right. technology. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it creates. <laughs> I, I think. Yeah, it, hey, it, it, hey, catfishing go both ways, though, G. I ain't even going to lie to you. Like, it's y'all got to be careful on these dating sites. I don't mean to <laughs> cut you off. But, right. real. but like. When it comes down to stuff like tagged and Tinder or whatever, like just make sure who you talking to is who you actually talk, talk, talk to. to. Yeah. Because in Atlanta, it's it's known like I've seen many stories of people on these dating sites and they can pull it up and and it's Dude. a trans in, transgender or you know a girl hopping in their inbox offering them a threesome or something and then when they pull up it's a dude like and I'm seeing all these stories like no I'm not I'm not trying to get into no dating site you know I would rather personal interactions absolutely absolutely and so um, you know again technology has a tendency to keep us from personal interactions. That means we all need to take time to go out and mingle among real people. If it's a sports bar around your corner, if it's your church, if it's uh, you know community activities, it's the club, we gotta find a way to get out and have human interaction. Because if you don't have human reaction, your human reaction qualities and character is receding. Right. It's diminishing. You're losing touch with people. You can't sit in your living room for three months and then go out with somebody and expect to have a normal conversation and a normal night. Because you're not. You're going to always be feeling like, I don't know what to say. I don't know you know, if he's looking at my, my makeup, if he's looking at my hair, my eyes. You know, you're going to always feel self-conscious because you don't know how to operate in people. And, and what's good about business is that you get, when you go to work, you have to interact with people. Right. Right? right work sometimes forces you back into the reality of life right, right. and um, and you know we we can learn how to manage relationships there but if we you know if we're closing our personal relationships off to uh, just what's happening on our cell phone and in social media we're gonna find ourselves not able to properly have a relationship right that's what's gonna happen we lose our relationship skills we lose the understanding we lose the 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 need for it we lose the zest for it we lose the, the, the zeal that creates relationships and connectivity. Let me have some fun real go quick. Ahead, go ahead, One of the things I want to do is have some fun with y'all. If y'all have an online, and I'm not opposed to online, but let's just say you, you met somebody and they showing you a picture, a stale picture. When I say stale, they ain't move. No, right. no live picture. feed, no, yeah. it's a stale picture. And, and you, you like the picture. Okay, my whole thing is to get away from the picture, talk to the person. Right. You can start off through um, texting through a site, if they ain't willing to give you a number, and I ain't talking about another app number, 
Right. Or they want you to go to another app. You know, Tinder. They want you to go to Snapchat. You want to go to all these different things, but you don't want to give me your number. Right. You can understand game recognize game. They right. jump you off ground because right. they want to leave Nashy for something. Right. My whole thing is if a person really wants interaction, they give you that number. They give you interaction. Because it should be a personal and get off a of site to uh, to get some interaction. Right. They'll tell you they got burned and they 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 scared. Then you don't need to be on the site. Right. <laughs> Real you talk. need to you need to sit your behind down and get past whatever you went through. But quit playing with people right. because these are just lies that's being repeated. Right. And I don't understand it because I keep watching people put themselves out there, but then they want to talk about the site. Right. <laughs> the site ain't the problem. It's right. the people. The site ain't the problem. People are trying to find ways to manipulate in today's time how to get over. You don't want to work, so I want to just beg somebody. I, I, I want to talk to you, but I ain't got no money. Can you send me a, a, a phone card? I don't even know you. <laughs> but I need to send you a phone card because you want to talk. Listen, game recognize what it is. Now, for the ones that fall victim and you gave, listen, you just gave. Help them out, whatever. My whole thing is, if you just keep receiving and you don't want to get off your behind, you the problem. Yeah. These sites ain't the problem. It's the people that want to manipulate. And my whole thing is, I don't care to manipulate anyone. And if you meet somebody that shouldn't be baby, honey, you should be saying hello. Right. Just like if I met you for real, I would say yeah. hello. I don't want to call you a baby or honey, and I just met you. I can offend a grown woman by saying these things. Yeah. So my whole thing is to greet you with how I like to be. Don't come up to me like that. Come up to me, how, how you doing, sir? Or hello. <laughs> I like a simple hello. Yeah, we love simple hellos. So we're going to go to break. That. Yeah. And we're going to ask you what you really feel about this. And again, Facebook, we can get you on here. We can see what you really got to say. And I don't know how modern technology got you. We just want to see if it helps or if it helps. Yeah, we'll be right back. In the building with me doing his thing, and uh, he got some things on his Facebook page. So, again, since I ain't seen nobody on my saying nothing, we're gonna answer his. That's right, he came in with something, and we're gonna go to it. So, what, what was the question that they All hit right. you up with? So, so, my girl V Secret, she hit me up and said, People give up completely because of the negative feedback of communicating through text. I feel like you have to be able to see each other or hear each other's voice to make a real connection. Text can be taken anyway. And I agree. I said I love the emojis. Yeah. I like some of the emojis and the things they put, but it does not take away from the real physical conversation, let alone the interaction that you need to do. Yeah. That I like to say that some of this stuff takes away from. That's because that's what you choose to do. Right. Yeah. We love interaction, so we won't probably go where some other people do. But some people feel like they're so busy, this is the best method for them. Right. And it, that's what they use. This is an escape method. Yeah. And my whole thing is don't let it be a total escape. Because that interaction that you're scared of is what you really need to embrace. Yeah, and 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 let's let, let's turn the corner on this text message Something. thing because um, there are a number of relationships that uh, you know the the majority of the communication is going to be by way of texts. Okay, okay? Um, you're going to have you know you got to make physical interaction when you can, but when you're sending a text, it is important to understand how that message might be received. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of real communication going on in the midst of text, whether it be questions, uh, whether it be, you know, you just want to, you know, I'm just saying type scenario, um, you, know, you know, rhetorical questions. Sometimes uh, you got to be tactful about how you deliver a message. And we can easily get it all twisted on text messages. Yes, we all hear me a text, all cap. Yeah. Yeah, you send a text. You send me a text. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. You're screaming at me. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you something back. You basically don't <laughs> yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah, play me if you want to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and people people play games. You know, on those on those text messages. You know, with LOLs and certain emojis. Yeah, you know, what you really. I ain't saying nothing for Yeah, yeah. So you know. I really don't even know how to address that issue, but that's a major Man. issue. Yeah, that's a major issue that you you got to find a way. And I I'm kind of a believer in some punctuation. Yeah. With questions, I'm signing. You know, I'm I'm good for saying um, 
you know, with love, you know, right. <laughs> with love, with all due respect, you know, I want to set up my message so that it is received properly. But you think about how, you know, a, a race of people who really have left Man. writing skills. Hey, I was putting together paragraphs you and just, messages. It's it's so right. crazy that that you were just in my head on that one. So technology, when when G was speaking about the digital divide, okay, we went from full conversations and paragraph style messages to <clears throat> I'm gonna short this down XLR8 for accelerate or L8TR for later. You know what I'm saying? Like right. people have abbreviated so much that we have lost the the real essence of communication of written and verbal communication. Yes. Cause you'll hear somebody talk and they'd be like, yeah, that's over there. I don't know uh, that. I don't know them. Them shits about like, like what? Okay. What are you talking about? I'm gonna right. give y'all my age. Right. I see so much stuff on these sites, and I get so many texts. I gotta go to Google. What yeah, the hell is this? I gotta Google <laughs> what that means. And it's, it's sad because my daughter have to be like, Daddy, just call me because yeah. she right. does that all the time. Right. She's like, I don't want to make you say "kill and hip," and I said, It's all right, baby, because I gotta Google. It is because like, like I tell you. I don't need to call you when I'm a grown man, and if I want to know, I'm going to find out. Urban so you keep right. You keep putting stuff out here, and I'm not hip with it. At least go back and find out. Right. I'm willing to take that step, but I'm not always willing to give it back. Yeah. Just because I read it and you said it, don't mean I have to do it. Yeah. I can give you the whole wording without abbreviating everybody, the T-Y and all the rest. How about I just give it to you how I like it? Right. And then you take a choice that you want to keep it to me. You know, give it back to me how I gave it to you, but you just want to keep it your way. And to me, it's fine either way, from the shorthand to the longhand. But please have a clear understanding of what's being said. That's the problem I'm having. Technology is not making us better or worse. It's choice. Because right. we take it and we choose to do less with what it. We do. Yeah, My whole thing is, when I didn't understand, I took Google to a whole nother level. I Googled it. <laughs> because again, why are we sitting here talking about it's out there and we're not doing nothing with it? When we should. When we should. And, and the younger people shouldn't be ignored because they shorthanded. Right. I just need to have a better understanding of what they're saying. Right. That way I can come back and intelligently respond compared to this, I don't know what the hell it means. Right. right. So but that see, means they out of it. Th th there's no, there's nobody um, managing this thing. It's just happening. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it, there's nobody communicating that, uh, you know, Maybe you need to express a little more love in your messages. Man. You know, maybe you need to be less intense. You know, some of those emojis. You, I know you don't know this, but the emoji that you sent over there meant that exactly. somebody kissed your hand. You know, you know they didn't like you or they don't like your. How about this crap? Like, what if you there's no emoji you didn't like? Have you ever just picked up the phone and called me? I had conversations that I didn't understand exactly what they were saying. Right. And I wanted to make sure they wasn't going left the center because if you think you're going to come for me like that, I ain't got a problem coming yeah. back. So <laughs> it, it, the, that stop, tech stop, conversation got to start. Right. And the first thing they said is, you took that out of context. I'm like, I took it out of context. Well, bottom line is, this is what I, I understood from what you gave me. Right. Or well, I ain't mean it that way. So I feel like, okay, at this point, we ain't communicating through text no more. Right. right. Because they ain't what you meant. And I took it totally wrong. It was just pick up the phone. Well, I thought you was busy. I will make time, and I'd rather make time to hear from you than to be not understood by the text that you give me. Right. That yeah, and make... listen, listen, well, some, of those, damn... some of those texts, and think about this, we've all had it happen to us. Some of those text messages are running straight game. Oh, yeah, oh, you know what? what? Right? You so, know what? out of the blue, somebody asks you, hey, what you doing tonight? <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I need a ride to such and such. Right. I'm going to invite you out with me to make it seem like, you know, we we, we a party in this thing. And then yeah. I'm going to find my own. I really need a ride. There's a lot of Because you ain't coming home with me. So you ain't getting that. Cash, but I got to ride that part. Cash app me $20, can you please? <laughs> no, no. Quick. Cash app you without asking. Yeah. Y'all know it's hey. rules to the game. Man. You do cash not app cash ass. You don't cash it's ass no damn body. Without at least having a phone call, you gonna get, and then put a right. note at the bottom. That note got the same thing that request got denied. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna sit there and yeah. request something from my ass. Yeah, I ain't talk to you. Listen, I don't know you, but you gonna request because it, I'm a good guy. Isn't listen? Isn't that the result though? Isn't that the result, the result of, of people not having good communication skills? No, that's the social, social media. media. A, a like, person like, they ask you. I, I mean, <laughs> they're, they're completely taking advantage no, of man. technology because they don't understand 
that they do. Maybe they don't. to a degree. Maybe. I mean, I'm on Maybe. both sides of the fence with that because I can understand now. Maybe. Now is that you. I feel like people don't have manners anymore ah, you know, because of social media. So right. that'll be the fine line in between it. They don't have the manners to actually call you and request or, or you know, see how you're doing first. Right. A person will call you and ask you some, for something before they see how you're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, okay, now I got this app. I don't have to say that to you. I can send what it's for, and if you decide to send that, then that's okay. But and listen, got, I, I, it's unfortunate Mm -hmm. But I have been a victim of that with mm -hmm. my own children. Oh, man. And, you know, it's so easy <laughs> for the kids to be like, Dad, I need $150. I'm going to X, Y, and Z. And, I'm, and I always cringe. I never deny the request, but I cringe. Like, I, I hope you aren't communicating with the world like that. Right. You know, I hope you are asking your boss for an off day through a text message that you sent on Thursday night at 1130. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you be need, working fine. Yeah, because you need tomorrow off. I really hope you're not communicating that way. Because There's some grown men doing it. Yeah, there is a lot of people. <laughs> I doing don't want to snitch, yeah. but I'm just saying <laughs> it has happened. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, if, you it, if you did it, you know you ashamed of yourself because yeah, I'm yeah. snitching. It is an unfortunate part of uh, how people are treating technology, right? They're mm -hmm. they're 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 really abusing technology. Mm -hmm. By making requests like that without um, you know without talking to the people, you just don't blindside people just because you got an easy way to communicate with them. I would it's unfair. You. It is. Uh, it it does not. It's not a a, a sign of respecting the person who mm -hmm. uh, who you're asking for, asking something from. Um, really bad business. It's just bad business altogether. My mm -hmm. my daughters did me, and they they, they ain't bad. My, my daughter's been great. But one of the things I always said to them is before you ever ask me for money, ask me how I'm doing. Right. And again, my daughter's got nothing but love and respect for me, and I, and I love them to death. Right. But again, when you get that phone call, Daddy, I need, I need. But it was a phone call. One thing I would say, they never just had a request. They never did that. Right. It was always a phone call. Right. But they always led with whatever bad thing that went on. When I was younger, I had to accept it because I wasn't there. Yeah. Now, that's me as a parent knowing I wasn't there, and I have to be the best person possible. Yeah. When I'm not there, don't act like you're there. Don't act like you're that strong, visual person and you ain't. Right. And sometimes they say never be a friend to your child. Please don't give advice if you don't understand. If I'm not there and I can't physically be there, I might have to be a friend by phone. Right. Because right. I need my baby girl to know if she run into something, she need to call me. She need to right. call me. And, she and, can't and call I'm me. that person she can call. So right. Instead of being that hard person that you ain't gonna do this, you ain't she don't see me. Right. So I'm going to be ignored and it's going to be more on mama. No, it took two to make them. Right. It's going to take me to be that other person that's going to be more understanding and talk to her and get her through whatever she's going through. I just don't like it when they just come automatically with what they need. And then when I talk to them, it ain't always what they need. We find a solution in what, what the problem is. Okay. Because See, that's what a, a man does, break all the way down. Break it down. But that's now know it's to a point on. that if they do need, they ask, they talk to me, and then they might give me a conversation later about what they need. Right. And it's fine. I'm, I'm fine with either, almost either or, but the request without having a conversation, that's like one of my daughters just requests and never said nothing to me. I'm totally offended. That's totally like getting because, a bill you ain't signed up for. And then she right. wrote a little note. Why? Oh, my, my car payment. I want to know why that car payment. I want to know what she's going through because if it's anything that I can help her through, I want to talk to her through it before I just give out my money. Okay, exactly. I'm not looking for it back. That's my girl. Right. I got her. I don't want her to put her hands in somebody else. What's going but on? Please let me know what goes on because if you don't, you're gonna be in this situation again. And when I don't give it, then I just let somebody else enter her life. Yeah. That she probably didn't. Right. Get and let me let me let me just give you a, a, a hint for those people who are experiencing this, everybody's experiencing this in one way or another. Uh, if you're sending a message to someone requesting something and you have had no interaction and no dialogue, you are offending them. Right. You should know that. You are offending them. That we are never going to get away from real people stuff. You have to communicate that, you know, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You, 
and life has been well for you. Listen, I hate to bother you, but I really need your help. Right. Right. There's, there's you got, you have to set up to knock down, no exactly. matter what you do in life. That's you true. have to set up to knock down. And so, if you're going to request something for me, you know, I, you know, I don't mind if you just got to play the game. You, you ask me this Wednesday, you know, how I'm doing. You ask me again on Friday how I'm doing, and then on Saturday you ask for the request. Hey, there's nothing wrong with you know having to work through your right. your stuff, but don't just come at me with a request. And you haven't, you know, you haven't uh, shown any love right. to so the one situation. Of, you know? One of my boys just commented um, and he say some some of the companies that um that's out here prefer communication through cellular devices, which is true. Like if you get if you get things like Lyft or Postmates or right. you know, it, it's not really options for you to call people. It's like we're gonna set everything up. You can't call us to our help center. We're gonna send you via email. So a lot of these companies is doing the same thing as far as jobs, as far as not interacting with the people that they're working with. And yeah. it's also creating a divide in the community. It is creating a divide. And, and man, that's gonna be a tough one to stop because what they're focused on is the dollar and the effectiveness mm -hmm. exactly. of the communication. And right? I feel like that, was, that yeah. relationship <laughs> should be worth exactly what it is. Yeah. Because it's, it's, that's that, that corporation. Right. If they don't want to respond to you, that's your choice if that's what you want to yeah. But they, don't they, treat me like that as a regular person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, you know, just imagine a guy out on the truck and, you know, he took lunch and fell asleep and he about 20 minutes behind on his appointment. So he can call the receptionist and be like, hey, I need you to cover for me, holler right. back, da 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 da. You come to him like, no, I don't want that. This is how you're going to okay. respond, right? Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned, uh, just to kind of turn the corner on the conversation, as uh, technology holds us accountable in a great way, in a great way. Uh, there are cameras everywhere. Mm -hmm. People are shooting film and you don't even know they're looking at you. <laughs> but they are taping you. All these scenarios that we're seeing on these wild uh, audio and video clips that are coming through the internet, um, you know, it's just, it's just absolutely incredible. Right. Um, you no matter what you're doing nowadays, you're probably going to be on somebody's tape. If you're buying something at a convenience store, right. if you're in a shopping mall, if you're at work, uh, you know, if you're in a hotel, you know, you know, if you're traveling on an airplane, no matter where you are, you are always in the eye of a camera. Mm -hmm. People can always see what you're doing. The world is transparent right. when it comes to that. You think you can stand on the street? and do something that you know is against the law, the camera is watching you. Right. You think you could pass through a, 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 a yellow or a red light and not get caught? The camera is watching you. And you folks know now, uh, you can go through a red light and um, they'll send you a ticket. Send you a ticket straight, send you to, the straight to your house. And listen, it don't be a single person to touch that. It be the camera and the electronic Technology software system said this person broke the law and it sends the ticket. Hey, y'all got, got the no people, people hype. interaction in that, yeah, right? Y'all got the people hype. Y'all got the people hype. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, come on. Yeah. yeah, so so there's always a camera around, and not not only is there always a camera around, but if people have been able to access you in a certain way, they can know your exact GPS position Man. all day, every day. Well, if you don't know your phone real well, <laughs> you could be telling somebody you somewhere, they can look. And right. see. Especially and on check Facebook. Your location. Yes. Your location uh, and yes. Yes. Even if you don't know how to block certain yes. things. That's just, that just goes to say that, you know, with technology being involved so much in our lives that you got to protect yourself, that you got to know, you know, the ins and outs. You got to turn off your location sometimes because a person can pull up like it's a lot of rappers that got shot or got killed because they went live at a club and the club showed their location at Facebook or on Facebook showed their location at this club so somebody pulled up and did something to them because they revealed their location yeah. it's like you got to be conscious of your decisions you yeah. know especially if you are here doing wrong man yeah you know, you know, and I, then for right even for right when it comes to locations and doing things there's times well me in the trucking industry GPS is great all right, all right. I can get around my people can get around and know where they're going. Right. And sometimes it's nice to understand where your surroundings are on both side streets. Exactly. So accidents happen all the time. And if you rely on your GPS all the time, it can lead you to, right. just like it can show you and it can give you an alternate route. There's time my GPS took me a long route yeah. and there was shortcuts through. Right. You also got to know your surroundings. Right. So there's sometimes I turn my GPS off because I have to learn. Yeah. I know the area. 
I know side streets. Right. GPS telling me this way. I know it's a side street right here. Yeah. And there's time I challenge myself, and this time I was wrong. GPS was right. Right. All right. But I learned that side street, and I learned the faster way. It helped me. Yeah. By not just depending on it. Yeah, I would exactly. not to say it's bad. Yeah, I don't disagree with it all. But at some point, you gotta know other ways around. And listen, let me tell you, folks, it, it, what he's really saying is, um, we kind of gotta get back to basics, right? Mm -hmm. I had a, a a mental internal scare just uh, a few weeks ago. I was reading an article about um, this terrorist uh, thing that would happen where they would basically knock out the power. Mm -hmm. uh, they would knock out the power and it would take two years for the power to come back on. There's no GPS if that ever happens. Right. So how do you maneuver from one city to the next, from one street to the next? you got to learn to read a map. Read a map. And there are so many people, listen, I see grandmamas coming to my dealership who had no clue where we were, but they got in the car with their GPS and they came to, right to, the, they came right to the dealership. You're not going to have that if something ever happens to our world. Mm -hmm. We do believe that our world is sustainable and we have enough energy for, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of years left. But if in the event you get stuck without your cell phone, without technology, what are you going to do? Right. How are you going to get to wherever you got to go to? And uh, you're going to have to go somewhere because now there's not, you're not going to have instant communication. Now, my boy right? just brought up another point. He said that people don't even remember numbers no more. I remember it was a time when oh. I remembered everybody's number. Right. I know your house number and I'm a, I'm a, you could give me, a girl could give me her number and I'm going to remember it all the way till I get to the crib. Because I know we, we knew that we didn't have okay. this access to this system. <laughs> So it became a handicap, it became a crutch for us, you know, like, it's bad. Yeah, it is, and uh, so a lot of people, I would probably say the vast majority of people are going to be stuck if technology is down. You just want to make sure that you know some real basic skills of life, you know, I mean, um, you know, when you depend so much on technology, not to say that technology is not going to always be here. But uh, you might need to learn some of the basic ways. And that goes back to learning your history and where things come from, whatever. Um, you know, as much as technology is helping us, it also could be hurting us. Right. And um, I've seen news reports recently, and I've read a couple of articles that if we were, if we were, if we could see the amount of radar and frequency and laser activity that's going on in this room right now we would be utterly amazed right. there's beams of light and certain frequencies and radioactivity there's all kinds of stuff going on and we do believe that we know now for a fact that much of this technology is causing cancer right, right. cancer is simply the body's inability to heal itself it causes an, a, a mal a malfunction in the body's ability to heal itself, right? Between the white and red blood cells. And a lot of that is happening as a result of this technology. We already know that in order to fix cancer, we have to go through radiation and chemotherapy. And what it does to people's bodies is just absolutely incredible. It does help and fix us, but what is it doing on the outside to us, right? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 you know, imagine just using the cell phone hardens a certain portion of your brain. Uh, something as simple as that. Uh, or maybe it whitewashes a certain part of your memory. Um, all of these things are very real. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to say how we can protect ourselves from it. Uh, I think we would need some experts to help us understand how do we protect ourselves from it. Uh, but it's a very real threat. And uh, I think we all just need to keep our eyes on the research. We need to keep our eyes on these articles. Uh, the other day, I think it was CBS or Fox News had a big broadcast about how technology was uh, influencing the human body and the human mind. And uh, it seems to be taking something away from us uh, as, you know, even in spite of it giving uh, great mobility and, uh, and opportunities to us as well. <clears throat> so one, one thing I want to say about technology is also proper use of it. Right. Uh, use the platform of Facebook, uh, social media sites, uh, IG, you name it. I, I try to jump on it. But again, understand your content. Right. Understand what you're doing. My whole thing is everybody I, I watch on Facebook, I see people doing stuff on Facebook. I be like, why are you doing it? Why am I questioning? I know what I do it for. And whatever you want to do it for, it is your business. But that's, again, 
It's going to be up to you. How you want to use things, going to be up to you. My thing is, have a plan. Form substance. People are doing it because they want to be famous. Right. I want to feel important. And I just want to see who else sees me. My whole thing is have content. Right. To put yourself out there and you ain't saying nothing, you ain't doing nothing. What are you doing? Right. I'm going to find my, somebody going to see me and I'm going to be famous. Okay. These are dreams. Exactly. My whole thing in a dream. And I dream success is a plan. So sit down with a piece of paper before you put yourself out there and figure out your plan and work your plan. And if somebody see you and you become successful, that's a successful plan. Right. Quit thinking somebody going to see you and you're going to be famous overnight. It's not going to happen. That's a myth. That ain't how it happens. And it's sad. And I, I put on, uh, what do they call it, myth busters. Uh, that one right there, <laughs> we're going to bust that one out. Yeah. So quit that one and understand, mm -hmm. you can put your stuff together. There's a lot of people been found on Facebook. Uh, Instagram and let alone YouTube right. they had great substance I'm not tripping on that but just putting yourself on there ain't saying nothing and just think that's gonna happen it's I'm just gonna tell you it's a lot more work than need to go behind I want to piggyback on that one time before I go because I do gotta get out of here I got a little event to go to but um and I just want to shout out bar talk with Jay one more time we got craftmatic we got Jay over in the corner um it's it's it makes it hard for people with substance because it's so many people without substance that upload or that you know that take control of these channels there's so many people that that look for a negative substance you know what i'm saying because substance has a positive and a negative side for balance mm -hmm. so when you look at content creation or you know just putting it in front of people last or the past couple of nights i've got reintroduced to people that i've already known in the music industry mm -hmm. like they know of my work ethic they know of what i've accomplished and the, the type of circles of people that i've been around mm -hmm. but because this one person in particular reintroduced me it created a new relationship you know you can't do that via social media you can't like somebody take your page oh i got 150,000 followers but they post you on a page and the post only get a hundred likes. It's like, why was that? It's because your your product or your message or your content is not compatible with their product, with Dang, their platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so <clears throat> when I come on here and I talk and I talk with Charles because it's compatible for my platform. I can't go on any radio station to have a real conversation like right. that. So I appreciate that for that. Yeah, we man. appreciate you. Yeah, man, absolutely. <clears throat> it is uh, just about time for us to close out, and we Ooh. absolutely hate. Uh, to leave you tonight, but um, you know we just wanted to open the doors on uh, on technology and you know the social media, cell phones, GPS, how they are influencing our lives. Um, you know I, I would just say that uh, you know technology holds us accountable. Um, I use my cell phone for every single part of my life. I read books. I have audio books. I have all my bank accounts. I can check my accounts and move money from here to there. I have my investment accounts tied to it. Um, I have all of my <clears throat> my friends and my family and all their phone numbers, which I would not know if I did not have my cell phone. I don't even know if I have them backed up on my cell phone, but I usually can get my contacts from my old phone to my new phone. Um, it is uh, it is really everything. I'm building my business through there. I'm learn. I'm I'm looking at articles and I'm learning and I'm growing and I'm developing. I go to YouTube videos to look at you know the housing market and I go see CNN and and you know all the information is there. Um, so I I am using it to better my life and uh, to keep myself focused and to keep myself on point. I got a bill reminder. And so when three days before the bill is due, it pops up on my screen, hey, you got to pay this bill in three days. That's how I protect my credit, right. right? I have an app where I can go and see my credit. And if something's not on there I don't like, I can I can screenshot it and send it to my lawyer. Uh, that is, by the way, on prepaid legal, so I can get right on in there <laughs> and get what I need, right? I got, I got an entire workforce of lawyers by my side right there through my app. And so uh, it gives great value, but it also can take away life. Don't let it hinder you from communicating with real people and expressing real love and having someone to shake a hand to, an eye to look into, a smile to look at. You're not going to find Mr. and Mrs. Wright right there on the internet. You're, you're going to meet them there, but when you find them, you're going to be in front of them, looking at them, talking to them, experiencing their energy, uh, their humor, etc., etc. So um, you know, don't don't let 
technology take you away from the world, and it certainly shall have a tendency to do that. I'm gonna say it like this. My mom is up in age. I won't give her age because she'll cuss me. Yeah. <laughs> but she texts, and she stopped texting a lot, but she texts, she drives, and she do so many different things. And she tells me all the time, technology change and it becomes difficult, but she just feels she still want to be a part of. So my whole thing is to you, embrace it how you can accept it. Everything ain't gonna be for you. And my whole thing is, use it the best way you can. Yeah. Because it can be scary. Yeah. But the best thing I can tell you is to see my mom text, she don't shorthand. <laughs> she don't. You know, right. and, and my whole thing is when it comes to the shorthand and everything else, is why are you shorting everything down when you're looking for so much more to come from whoever you're talking to? Mm -hmm. And I always like somebody to give it all to me compared to some. So let's just look at what we do and let's just see if we can get together and have more to do. That's go. all I want to do. Nike, baby, let's just do it. Let's just do go. it. Come on now. All right. And uh, folks, this has been Bar Talk with Jay. Again, uh, our interest is in inspiring people through dialogue and uh, we hope that you've had an opportunity to see yourself in our dialogue uh, maybe to help you make some better decisions about tomorrow um, my name is Craftmatic this is my boy right Smooth J we got TR380 in the building Rock D on the wheels and of course we got Boo behind the camera we love you all we thank you for being with us and continuing this visit with us every week Thursday from 7 to 9 Facebook Welcome Live you can always find Bar Talk with Jay Y'all stay tuned, and we'll see you next time. Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay.